Now it's time to introduce the setting for our second algorithm. So in the last videos we um, described uh, functions, first of all dif uh, differentiable func functions with Lipschitz continuous gradients and second we described proximal points of not possibly non-smooth non-differentiable functions. So um, the forward-backward algorithm which is the algorithm we're going to analyze combines those two in order to minimize the sum of, uh, of or a sum of, of of each function of each type. So let's let's write this down formally. Let f be a function from h to r. And this is our, our smooth function. So let this function be convex and differentiable with gradient f uh, being Lipschitz continuous with constant L. Okay, so this is the first summand and then the second summand is let g Go be a function with values in R bar, be proper, convex, and lower semi-continuous. Okay, so as I said, the sum of those two functions, and we want to minimize f plus g. One possibility, as we saw, was the uh, subgradient method, which would, in this case, in each step, take a gradient evaluation of f, a subgradient evaluation of g. The problem being that the subgradient is not necessarily um, non-empty, so there might be a problem in the algorithm that you don't find a subgradient at a certain point. For example, when you're outside of the domain of g. And uh, so the more like, I don't want to say natural, but, but in, in a sense, um, in a sense, more natural way would be to, to take proximal points of G, uh, which always exist, as we have seen, and are unique. And you can also show that they, that uh, the proximal point is Lipschitz continuous with constant one. Uh, so if you want to show that, you are free to do so. That's very simple from, from the inequality we saw in the last uh, two videos. Okay, so the first um, the first step in our analysis will be to describe the optimal points of or the, the, the solutions of our problem of minimizing f plus g, so the minimizers of f plus g. So um, this will be the setting for the, the rest of this section on the forward-backward algorithm. Okay, so uh, for a point x bar in H, the following statements are equivalent. First, x bar minimizes f plus g. The second um, minus the gradient of f at x bar is an element of the subdifferential of g at x bar. Third, x bar is the proximal point um, with step size gamma of g of x minus gamma gradient f at x bar for some gamma greater or equal, uh, gamma greater than zero. Four, x bar is equal prox gamma g x bar, of course, in both cases, minus gamma gradient f of x bar 
for all gamma greater than 0 and 5, um, f of x plus g of x is greater or equal than f of x bar plus g of x bar plus uh, 1 over 2L norm of gradient f of x minus gradient f of x bar squared for all x in H. Okay, so we have now five equivalent statements here and all of them describe um, when a point x bar minimizes f plus g. Okay, so first of all let's let's sort out the trivial statements in, in this case, so or the easier to prove statements. So I think the most trivial statement is the statement from 5 to 1 because here we have f of x plus g of x greater or equal than f of x bar plus g of x bar plus something positive. So the right hand side is greater or equal than f of x bar plus g of x bar and then the thing means that x bar minimizes f plus g. Okay, so this is trivial by just leaving out this uh, non-negative um, term here. Okay, and then we have the statements 2, 3, and 4. Um, these follow from um, the character characterization of of the proximal point. Uh, what does this mean? Uh, whenever we have some gamma, then um, x equals proximal point gamma g of this term here means that this term minus x bar, so uh, just minus gamma gradient f of x bar, divided by gamma so just minus gradient f of x bar is in the subdifferential of g at x bar and this is exactly point 2. So these two are equivalent as we have shown in our characterization of the proximal point. So this means that whenever we have for this for some gamma this is equivalent to 2 and of course this is also equivalent to having this for all gamma because in 2 there is no gamma. Okay so these were the the easier statement. So we are left with basically uh, these two are equivalent, uh, these three are equivalent. We have shown 5 implies 1. So now let's show that 1 implies the, this, these equivalent statements 2, 3, and 4. So um, let's show that 1 implies 2. Okay. By 1. What do we have? x bar minimizes f plus g. So we have for all x in h, f of x plus g of x greater or equal than f of x bar plus g of x bar. This is just property 1. Okay, and now uh, we want to use um, the uh, statement of that f is Lipschitz continuous with constant L. And in this case, it is sufficient to use the non-convex version. Uh, so the first inequality we, we showed, which did not require convexity. So by um, the Lipschitz property of a gradient of F, and we take the non-convex version And what do we have then? Okay, so we have that we want to basically make this inequality just an inequality on g alone because we want to show that a certain element is part of the subdifferential of g and this um, 
requires some inequality on, of the function values of g. So we want to get rid of the function values of f. So we write f of x bar and uh, just um, uh, the Um, the inequality was as follows. We had f of x bar greater or equal than f of x. And now um, plus gradient f of x bar and x bar minus x. This should, um, and, and we had minus L half norm of x minus x bar squared. Okay, so if you look at this uh, very closely, this means that f of x less or equal than f of x bar plus gradient f x minus x bar here. So this would be the first order approximation plus this quadratic term here. So f of x bar is bounded from below by this. Um, uh, quadratic um, approximation here, this first order plus this quadratic term. So this was the uh, the content of the of this of the of our theorem here for a Lipschitz for, for the Lipschitz continuous gradients. Okay, so now we have to take into account that all the function values of f are real numbers, and so we, uh, and so we can just add. Um, add these two inequalities and just um, subtract f of x bar and f of x on both sides. So add those two inequalities. What do we get then? So we have f of x on both sides. So this, this, this goes out. Then we have a g of x greater or equal than and now f, um, f of x bar is also out. So we only have g of x bar plus gradient of f at x bar, x bar minus x minus l half norm of x minus x bar squared. So we are almost there. In fact, if we did not have the last term, then this would exactly be the characterization of this as, a, as of, of minus gradient f of x bar as a subgradient of g at x bar. Now we have to get rid of uh, the last term here, and the way to do this is what we have used several times in this lecture, um, just. Uh, which is it's very useful in convex analysis or co yeah, in general. Replace x by one minus lambda x bar plus lambda x, and here uh, lambda is also between zero and one. So we still have um, x in H um, arbitrary. So actually, we could we could write this here. Okay, so if we replace x by this other point here uh, with lambda between zero and one, we get um, I leave some, I, I leave some space here. Um, we have basically um, wait I should leave some I should leave some more space. Um, we have uh, g of 1 minus lambda x bar plus lambda x greater or equal than um, g of x bar unchanged plus gradient f of x bar also unchanged x bar minus 1 minus lambda x bar minus lambda x minus lambda half 
norm of 1 minus lambda x bar plus lambda x minus x bar squared. Okay, and this is, um, as we know from convexity, um, certainly less or equal than 1 minus lambda g of x bar plus lambda g of x. So this is a chain of inequalities. Okay, so here um, we know that um, since we, we assume point 1, x bar is a minimizer of f plus g, so g certainly has uh, a real function value because um, it ca cannot be minus infinity because g is proper, it cannot be um, plus infinity because other than there would, there would not, not be any real function value, so g would be constantly plus infinity, and this is also a contradiction to the properness of g. So g also has, a g of x bar is also finite, so we can uh, subtract g of x bar, and we can also, um, we can also uh, simplify these things here. So we subtract minus g of x bar. As I explained, this is possible. And then we have lambda g of x minus lambda g of x bar greater or equal than we have subtracted this. Then we have the inner product of gradient of f, of f x bar with, here we have x bar minus x bar plus lambda x bar minus lambda x. So just lambda x bar minus x minus lambda half. And here we have x bar minus x bar. So we have uh, the norm of lambda x minus x bar squared. So we have lambda squared times the norm of x minus x bar squared. Okay, so now we can divide by lambda um, because lambda is a common factor in all of our terms and let uh, lambda go to zero. This is the standard trick we used um, to get rid of, of some of these quadratic terms and just fully linear, linearize in um, the neighborhood of x bar. Okay, so this means that g of x minus g of x bar greater or equal than uh, gradient f of x bar, x bar minus x. And this term still contains a lambda even after the division by one of the lambdas. And so this goes to zero um, as lambda goes to zero. So this holds for all x and h. And this means that um, so yeah, you just have to flip x and x bar here. So if you do this, you add a minus sign here, you, and you flip those two. And this means that minus um, gradient f of x bar is in subdifferential of g at x bar. So because this is just the definition. So this shows point two. Okay, so we have shown one implies two, three, four. We have shown that five implies one. So we have to show that one of these two, three, four imply five, implies five. And uh, the easiest way probably to do this is, I mean, they are all equivalent rather trivially, but we can just take point two and show point 0.5. Okay, how do we do this? So by 2 we have basically this inequality um, for all x and h. So we have g of x um, greater or equal than g of x bar minus gradient f of x bar, x minus x bar. And by 
the Lipschitz property of uh, the gradient of f, of f, and this time we use the convex version, otherwise we don't get the right result. Um, we have f of x greater or equal than um, f of x bar plus gradient of f at x bar x minus x bar plus 1 over 2L gradient of f minus a uh, gradient of f at x minus gradient f of x bar norm squared. Yeah. Okay. So if we adding if we add those two then we get exactly 0.5 because we have f and g of x on the left hand side, f and g of x bar on the right hand side. Those two inner products uh, cancel, cancel out because that's like ones with plus, ones with minus. And then this term is exactly the last term we need for five. And thus we have shown uh, the equivalence of those five properties.